We've all been there at some point. You're just sitting there, chilling with your tumbleweeds when you suddenly realize you've run out of Doritos because your mom only packed you three bags. As your balls retract into your stomach, your primal instincts kick in and you muster the strength to walk the seven meters back to the house. Here are a couple of things to take into consideration should you ever find yourself in a situation like that again. A compass is always cool to have. Even if you use other methods of navigation, a compass of some kind should always be a part of your tactical wilderness survival kit. A compass is traditionally used with a map, but a map is not strictly necessary if you just want to get out of a sticky situation. You don't even have to know all the party tricks you can do with it. The most important thing is that you have something that shows a constant direction just to avoid walking in circles, which is something humans are very prone to when left to our own devices. If you're into some of that nighttime navigation, and your compass only has this fluorescent illumination that needs to be recharged with light, it might be a good idea to get kinky and incorporate a small UV lamp into your kit. The UVA radiation from such a lamp will recharge the fluorescent material in your compass in a matter of seconds, as opposed to what always feels like hours with regular light. If your ferro rod came with one of these assholes, do yourself a favor and replace it with something else, like the spine of a knife or a piece of an old hacksaw blade. I'm convinced that these bastards were designed and built by people who have never used a ferro rod. They hardly ever throw enough sparks to make even the most explosive of tinder bundles go nuclear. Immediately, you can see my sparkler has been turned into a Model 2 flamethrower. This fucking thing is a piece of shit. Your flashlight should have a red or green light in addition to the white. These wavelengths of light will not absolutely fuck your natural night vision as badly as white light, and they are less likely to attract insects from the next county over. And as a bonus feature, if you really want to reenact Metal Gear Solid 3, red and green light are way less visible to the human eye than white light. That's part of the reason why flashlights geared towards the military market usually have one or both of these colors on them. If you're stuck with only a white light, slap a piece of masking tape over the lens to soften the beam. Unless you're searching for something, there's rarely any reason to use the unmodified white light. Side note, red is the best color for night vision preservation. I'm only including green in case some dipshit cocked up your order and sent you the wrong lamp. Aside from the ever so controversial batoning or straight up using your compensator as a hatchet, there are some tricks you can do with some less eccentric pieces of gear. In this case, a more regular sized knife and a saw. I was gonna use the knife and saw of a Leatherman multi-tool, but then it dawned on me. These are fucking horrible for this. So I opted for the option less likely to cause permanent nerve damage. First, you'll need to crank out a wedge or two. This should be made from hardwood, and it should have a double bevel like this. Or a convex edge like the monstrosity I ended up with, so it doesn't crumple like a fucking accordion on the first strike. I'll also add a chamfer to the striking side so it doesn't mushroom out and crack as easily. When you finally have all your shit together, make a cut into the end of the piece you want to split, and then jam your wood in there with the force of a thousand suns. It's not the most efficient way of splitting wood, and it can be a bit difficult to pull off. However, most of that difficulty comes from the depth of the cut. The deeper it is, the easier it'll be, basically. 